Hello, Joe Stedman. I'm going to do a quick review overlook, uh, not in depth, of the GMT game Barbarossa Crimea 41 to 42. This is uh, something I just recently got. It's um, there's other reviews out there if you want to look at a little bit more detail. GMT has put out a little more detailed review of this, but I thought yeah, I'd give you my opinions, my uh, first impressions. <coughs> uh, I have a cold, so bear with me. All right. This is an operational warfare game, and I have this all spread on a table. I'm going to show you this, the, what comes with the game in a minute, and it's all about siege warfare. It is a game that's part of a series of games, um, the uh, Russian Front series of games, or Barbarossa from GMT. These maps are all smaller parts of a monster game. It's not a beginner's game yet. This one or the one before this, um, Kiev to Rostov, would are good introductory uh, games to the series. It's operational. You are the general. You know you're not down on the battlefield. You're commanding huge units. And you're pushing them around the, the map, um, giving worried about supply and things. Not so much about you know this tank fighting that tank. It's um, it's very interesting. It comes with a lot of cool stuff. It's hard to criticize. These games, these uh, operational games are going to take a long time to play. Hours and hours and hours. These are the kind of games that you want to set up in a basement or um, at a convention and, and play with some friends. You can play two player or you can play with a bunch of people combining, uh, making it into two different teams or different guys control different commands, different units. Um, it's really neat. I, I don't get a chance to play this kind of game as much as I'd like just because it's so time consuming and I play so many other games but I have to give this game credit where credit is due. Crimea is the sixth game in the series of the Eastern Front series and it literally will connect to the other games. I think, yeah, this one connects to the Rostov game. You put the maps right there, put a plexiglass over it and you're good to go. So, and like I said, this is not a game for a beginner. There's lots of things you have to worry about from supply to air power to naval rules. Um, Fortified lines, strong points, air missions, weather, um, it's quite a bit. But if you've got someone who can teach you or you have a lot of patience and you have a place where you can set this up, this wouldn't be a bad investment if you're interested in this hex style operational game where you get to play the general commanding all your armies. So let me zoom in and show you what comes with the game so you can better make a better decision if you think you want to buy this game. All right. All right, so you got the good holly quality GMT box. Let's get that out of the way. Here's the map. That's a paper map. You can see that it's um, surrounded by water, so it's not like there's a table edge like in a lot of games. It seems almost fake because you can run off the edge. Everything's gonna be happening right here. There's a little smaller zoom map here uh, of this area, and then if you get even closer. You can see that some of the hexes are even blown up. Like this is just one hex that represented on the big map where you can put units off to the side here. Um, and like the, a lot of the GMT games and the modern games, it's got little cheat sheets and stuff all over the map that you can be able to use. Good paper map. Uh, and this will be Map Q. Remember I told you this? Uh, there's a series of the games. This is Map Q if you're playing it like a monster game. Alright. It comes with two full color rule books. It's got the rule booklet which is uh, quite long, color examples, play, um, so it looks like it's all the way up to 37 pages until you get to the index. Like I said, not for the faint of heart. Then it's got the playbook, which is really cool. It's got a real cool example of playing it back. It's got, oh, it comes with four, color, uh, four counter sheets. It's got a scan of all the different sheets. Examples of play, historical notes, notes on each of these scenarios. There's a bunch of scenarios in this game. It gives notes for each of those. Amazing. A lot of stuff has gone into this. A lot of research and stuff. Expanded sequence of play. So anyway, so that's that. So there's the two major rule books. Ten-sided die, GMT baggies, which I never use, but it's all right. All right, one, two. Three, naval chart, four, there's all these different cheat sheets. 
these these you can use with all the Eastern Front games. These uh, these here, they're full color though. That's kind of nice. Um, for your helping out with the play, you got your turn record track, all good hard card stock. Let's see. And these are your scenario cards, full color scenario cards, helping out. And one of these. Let's see here. Some of these even have an inset map that you can use for some of the scenarios. There you go. Here's another one. So there's a there's a map on the inside you can play on. Scenario card. This is one of the introductory scenario. Pretty cool, man. All right. So this is a well-designed GMT game. Um, higher complexity yet uh, well written. Um, the rules has some, you know, some uh, errata, some spelling mistakes, some little things that kind of disappoint me, but nothing I couldn't overlook easily. If this is your thing, this is a worthy investment. If, if you're interested in Eastern Front, if you like uh, these operational games, it's definitely a good investment. GMT has a, a pretty good review of the game out there, and if you can go on some of the different board gaming sites, you can find some other information. But this is kind of my overlook, my impressions of it. Um, and uh, there you go. There's also a good uh, Vassal module out there so you can play this online if you wouldn't have the table space to play it. But you need the game if you're going to play it online. So so there you go. That's Barbarossa um, Crimea uh, by GMT. Great. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.